Hello everyone and welcome back to the Environmental Management Flipped Classroom series. Today we'll start our second unit of the course, which is Energy and the Environment. This unit will focus on our society's great need for electricity and other energy related products. And we'll discuss topics such as the different energy sources that we use, what are their different impacts, and also how can we conserve energy and manage these resources more effectively. Looking at the official IGCSE syllabus, we can see our first class today will focus on fossil fuels and their formation. So let's get started. There are three main fossil fuels that we need to be able to describe the formation of for the final exam. And these will most likely be familiar to you. They are coal, oil, and natural gas. All of these fossil fuels are hydrocarbons. That means that they're very rich in carbon, which makes them an excellent fuel source for us to use. Coal, oil, and gas are all formed in a similar way. They're formed from the decaying organic material of past plants, insects, sea life, and other animals over very, very long periods of time. Because they are so rich in carbon, they're highly exothermic and energy dense. That means that we can produce a lot of energy in the form of light and heat for a very small unit of fuel when we combust them. This is what drives our addiction to them in daily life today, when we generate electricity. Burning or combusting these fuels releases large amounts of carbon dioxide into the atmosphere, which is a greenhouse gas. This means that fossil fuel burning or usage is a primary human cause of climate change. Fossil fuels form over millions of years. In fact, most of the fossil fuels that we use today were formed 300 million years ago in the Carboniferous period. This was a period in the Earth's history when the world was dominated by large insects and it was covered in lots of swamps and vegetation like trees and other plants. A large amount of this organic material was very useful for us because this is what's needed to form our fossil fuels. Because fossil fuels take such a long time to form, this means that there's a very limited supply on our Earth today. And for this reason, fossil fuels can be considered a non-renewable energy source. This slide demonstrates the large differences between life in the Carboniferous period and life on Earth today. 300 million years ago, many of our continents like Africa and South America were joined together. And the insects that were alive back then were much larger than the insects we have today. For example, you can see that the first cockroach was four or five times larger than its cousins on Earth today. So the main exam question you will face is to describe in detail the formation of either coal, oil and gas. And luckily for us, for each fuel type, the process of formation is largely the same. Start your answer talking about 300 million years ago in the Carboniferous period. This is where the earth had large swamps, giant insects, and was very rich in vegetation and other plant material. This vegetation and fauna died and started the formation process by which it decayed and created something called peat. Peat is a key word to note here. You can think of peat as a soil-like material rich in partially decomposed vegetation and other organic matter. Over time, the peat was buried underground, causing pressure to compact and compress this material creating another material called lignite. Lignite is a sedimentary rock and is also known as brown coal. And lignite is the final step before we form our coal. The conditions or the recipe for the formation of different types of fossil fuels change slightly and can be seen on this slide here. Coal is formed primarily from vegetation, past trees, ferns, shrubs, or other types of plants. The lignite mentioned in the previous slide is cooked from heat underground, and this forms our coal. Oil is slightly different. 
Oil is primarily formed from very small living organisms, such as zooplankton, insects, or algae. And this is acted upon by large amounts of pressure after being buried underground for millions of years. Gas is very similar to oil. The only difference here is that gas has been acted upon by larger amounts of heat and larger amounts of pressure. Fossil fuels are extracted from the ground through mining. Now, after studying Unit 1, you should all be experts in the process of mining. To mine for oil and gas, you need certain geological conditions to trap these fossil fuels because they are liquid in the case of oil and gas in the case of natural gas. These fossil fuels are usually trapped under a layer of impermeable rock. Inside, a permeable rock layer. A permeable rock is a rock with many pores or spaces or holes which allows liquids and gases to move within. And the conditions needed are shown in this diagram here. So let's review the key vocabulary from this lesson. We have been talking about the formation of fossil fuels. There are three main types, coal, oil, and gas. All these fossil fuels are rich in carbon, which makes them excellent for combustion or burning. And these fossil fuels are also created from the decaying of past organic material, such as plants or small animals. During the Carboniferous period, the earth was covered in lots of vegetation. This created the conditions where we had lots of decaying organic material. The process of forming fossil fuels, firstly, we need to create peat, which is partially decayed organic material. This peat is then buried under the ground or buried under sediment and pressure is applied until we create lignite or our brown coal. Once this lignite is cooked or heated, then we will create our coal. Oil and gas is slightly different because oil and gas, first of all, the ingredients are normally small organisms like zooplankton, and they also need to be trapped with impermeable rock, rock which have lots of pore space or holes to trap the gas and liquid there under an impermeable rock layer. So that's the first lesson in Unit 2 of the Flipped Classroom series. I hope you enjoyed and I will see you in class soon.